Right, we've already heard a little bit from other speakers about the, the importance of reducing spread, and I want to start my talk the same way, even though that isn't the theme of my talk. The absolute most vital thing about the uh, preservation of, of Kauri forest as we know it is to prevent its spread. But what about the areas that are already infected, where we have these foci of infection that we know are going to just gradually spread? Is there anything we can do about these trees to stop them all advancing to this sort of stage? And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today, about a potential tool for treating areas that are already infected to see if we can remediate the problem a little bit. A couple of speakers have already mentioned phosphite, and this is probably one of the most promising tools we have in terms of treating areas that have already got uh, uh, infections from kauri dieback. Phosphite is a, a very simple molecule, H3PO3. It's been used in horti horticultural systems for a number of decades now, uh, specifically to treat kauri dieback. And it's also being used in, in native plant communities as well, particularly in, in Australia. And they've done some excellent work over there. It's a fairly safe chemical to use. It's got low toxicity um, and it doesn't accumulate in the environment. Um, so it's got some really good points about it. It seems to be directly antagonistic to Phytophthora. It does suppress its growth, but it also stimulates the host defences. So it actually helps the tree to fight back against the Phytophthora attack and, and set up its own defences. It does seem to be reasonably specific to Phytophthora and closely related organisms of this OMIC group, so that's another plus for it. And it can be applied in a number of different ways, um, injection, foliar sprays, perhaps soil drench, or a paint onto the trunk, or a spray onto the trunk. And that these are all possibilities that some might work in some situations and some in others. So obviously it's a good candidate for cardi dieback. So our experimental approach uh, to actually test this, because we didn't want to go charging off in the bush and start treating trees without doing any sort of preliminary experimental work. So we started off with some lab studies, then we moved into seedlings in the glasshouse that had been inoculated with, with the, uh, the PTA, and then we moved into um, stands of forest that were suffering from PTA. First of all, the, the lab tests, these were very simple, what we call poison plates. It's a standard system for, for testing any sort of chemical to, to see whether it's um, antagonistic to the, to the pathogen that we're working with. So basically what we've got here is um, increasing concentrations of phosphite in the media. So this one didn't have any phosphite, and we're just gradually increasing the concentrations up to 250 parts per million. And you can see the effect that that has had on the growth of the, of the PTA. And we compared it with a couple of other species that are well controlled by phosphite, the Phytophthora cactorum and Phytophthora cinnamomi, and, and the PTA seemed to be even more rapidly suppressed than these other species. So that gave us some cause for optimism. We moved into trials with young kauri seedlings in the glasshouse. These seedlings were inoculated with the PTA either onto the stem by making a, a small wound in the stem and then adding an oat grain that had the PTA growing on it, or from pouring inoculum into the soil to infect the roots. Then we applied various phosphite treatments, either as a spray onto the canopy, or an injection into the trunk, or a soil drench. We tested another product that's been used sometimes, for uh, that's Ritamil, and we had untreated control, so we could compare it and see if it was making any difference. Um, the only treatment there that was particularly tricky to do was the injection, uh, to inject trees that are the small was quite tricky, but we came up with a, quite a nice technique with a, a hypodermic needle pressurised with a very high-tech rubber band. <laughs> and that worked quite well. So don't worry too much about the graph just yet. I just wanted to point out a few of the things that we measured, things like root disease, and you can see across the bottom there a whole range of um, different um, root healths that came through it by the end of this experiment. The bottom line was the root disease was much less in the trees that we treated with phosphite than it was in the trees that were left untreated. The other thing we looked at was for the trees that had been inoculated onto the trunk, we looked at the, uh, the lesion spread. And you can see here the, the sorts of lesions, that the inoculation point would have been just here, and you can see how the PTA has spread up and down from that point, and a whole range of different things that we saw. And the lesion growth was a lot greater in the trees that had been left untreated. Where the trees were treated, particularly where they had been injected with the phosphite, 
the lesion spread was generally quite small and in most cases healed around the margin and started cracking. And two years later, those same trees, that callus that formed over the wound, had healed, had sort of melanised, gone black on the outside and was very healthy underneath. So jumping straight to a, sort of the end result, the tree survival, and it was pretty clear cut. If you look at the untreated controls, they all died. Every tree that we inoculated with PTA died, and fairly quickly. In most cases, within three or four weeks, we were at least seeing symptoms, and by 10 weeks, pretty much everything was dead. And you contrast that to the ones that we injected with the phosphite. Uh, the, the blue and the red, don't worry too much about that, one's, one was just the soil inoculated trees, the other one the trunk inoculated trees. Very much the same result in both cases. A little bit of um, treatment effect with the other treatments, but nothing like we got with the injection. And as I mentioned, we got good root health, root health and uh, lesion healing in the uh, injected trees. So, moving on to the forest trials. We had four sites. You might recognise a couple of these names from, uh, from John's talk. Uh, the Huia and the, the Whatapu sites were natural regenerating stands out here in the Waitakere's. Um, these stands are, I guess, around 100 years old or so, the natural regeneration after logging. The two Northland sites, uh, Ratia and Omahuta, were planted, uh, part of that planting that John mentioned in the 1950s, and or 1950s through 60s, the plants were probably sourced from Waiwa, well, they were sourced from Waipu at Plant Nursery. All of the sites, all of our trial sites, were infested with PTA. Um, they were all, all the trees that we used were showing symptoms at the start, either canopy thinning or, or bleeding cankers around the base of the tree. The trees we looked at were what you would call the ricker stage. They were between sort of 15 centimetres up to about 45 centimetres would have been our biggest tree. We scored all of the trees before starting so that we had a good baseline assessment on the, tree, on the health of all of those trees. So we took photographs around the base of every tree, we took photographs of the canopy, and we will use those as a reference point every time we go back into the forest and doing more measurements. Wherever we saw lesions, we took measurements of those lesions, we drew using a chinograph pencil or a marker pen around the base, around the, the margin of those lesions, so that we've got a record of where that was and we can assess how the lesion is moving on each subsequent visit. The injection treatment itself, um, we use the standard phosphite, Agrifos 600. It's a common agri-chemical. You can buy it in any fruit feed or similar store. Uh, we tried two different concentrations, one quite high, the 20%, and a relatively low concentration, 7.5% solution. Our initial plan had been to do annual and biennial treatments and compare them and compare them to the untreated control. We're probably going to pull back a bit from that. I think we may leave it sitting as we have at the moment. We've done a single annual treatment. Oh, we're sorry, we've done a, an annual treatment on, or for two years, so in other words, two treatments, versus the single upfront treatment um, and our untreated control. We may leave it sitting like that for a while to see what sort of longevity we get out of those treatments. The first thing we noticed, particularly with the high rate, was phytotoxicity. We did have some problems, and I don't want to pretend that there is no downside to treating with phosphite. If you get the rate too high, you will cause a detrimental uh, effect on the tree. What we saw was uh, yellowing of the canopy, we saw browning, and we even saw branch drop. You know how kauri trees shed their branches? Well, they did it quite quickly when we put on too much phosphite. Um, and this is a very important thing to be aware of. Um, but the good news was that, if you look at the photos on the right here, pre-treatment, yeah, look pretty good. Post-treatment didn't look so good. But you go forward a few months and those brown leaves have dropped off, the green leaves are left behind and those trees regrow and keep going. So you can think of it a bit like chemotherapy perhaps. Your hair falls out but the patient survives. I don't want to make light of this um, phenomenon because I think it's an important one, but the, the, it is important also to realise that even though there might be a short-term down, downside, the trees can work their way through it. But from basically after finding this, we have dropped out that high rate. We only look at the lower rate at 7.5% now. We are not going in any higher than that. And I don't think it's necessary. So in terms of the results we're getting, we're still very in, early into this trial program. We're looking at about a five-year program. We're just over 18 months into it now. So it's still very early days. 
Now, in terms of can it be symptom changes, we haven't noticed any real difference yet. If anything, on average, across all treatments, there's been a slight dec decline in the canopy health. We're not going to suddenly turn around the health of a, can of, a, of a cowrie tree, certainly what you see up in the, in the branches. But in terms of our lesion measurements, we are already starting to see some differences, and we're feeling quite encouraged by this. Some of the lesions at the base of the trees have remained active and kept spreading and are still oozing out this gum. Other lesions have dried up and appear to be healing. Now I've got results here from the four different trial sites. We've got um, the, the Huia, Omohuta, Whaupu and the Ratia sites. What we're measuring here is the percentage of lesions that appeared to be active at our assessment after 17 months. Basically, if it's in red, it means the lesion's still active. If it's green, the lesion appears to be healed. If we couldn't make up our minds, and it is a bit of a judgment call, it's orange. So the key point here is that all four sites, in the untreated trees, there is a lot more activity after 18 months than there is in any of the phosphite treatments, whether it's been one application or two. Looking at the the actual spread of those lesions and measuring it. And here's an example of one of the worst trees that we've got in our trial at the, at the right here side. Um, this is the tree just after the start of the trial, March 2012, 15 months later, the same tree. And look how much that lesion has spread over that very short time. And this tree looks the same on the other side. So it's, uh, it's probably doomed. This, this was not a treated tree. But this is the sort of spread that we were seeing already over the time course. And we didn't see any trees in our treated um, treatments that, that, uh, that had that sort of lesion spread. So looking at the actual data that came from measuring all of those lesions from our original reference points, this is what we've got. Uh, again, the four sites, the green bar is our uh, untreated trees, and the red and the blue have had either uh, two or one phosphite treatment. Now the key feature here is that in all four sites, the green bar is higher than the, uh, the, the blue and the red, showing that in the untreated controls, these, this lesion spread is a lot greater, well, it is greater in, in most cases than the other treatments. The right here site, as you can all see, is, and you're all sitting there wondering why is the right here site so much worse than the others in terms of the lesion spread? Well, I really don't know, but it may be something to do with these trees being plantation trees, are growing very quickly and very vigorously, and I wonder whether that makes them perhaps more susceptible to the pathogen, but that's just pure speculation. There's nothing more than anecdotal evidence for that one. So as I mentioned, uh, there's lesion healing in most of the injected trees. Um, if we zoom in on that tree, you can see around, around here is the line that was drawn at the start of the trial where we judged the edge of the lesion to be. And this is after about 17 months, and you can see how there's this cracking beyond that original lesion margin and healing underneath, a nice healthy bark below that peeled region uh, with good, good healthy lenticels underneath there. We also occasionally saw this phenomenon in untreated trees, so this wasn't exclusively on the phosphite treated trees, but I've got a feeling that in the untreated trees, this, these healed patches will get outflanked by other areas that are coming in in different places. So what I believe is happening is that the phosphite is actually helping the tree to boost that natural defense that the tree has, and actually gives them a bit of a, uh, a helping hand in terms of fighting back this disease. So the trials for our field plans, uh, we did have more treatments planned for January 2014. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're thinking of suspending those just to see what sort of longevity we get out of our current treatments, but yeah, happy to talk more on that one. Um, the health assessments, yeah, we'll keep going back every six months and looking at the canopy, comparing it to the original photographs, looking for changes, measuring lesions and looking at lesion advance. And we're just about at the stage now where we want to do more trials to answer different questions based on the knowledge that we've, we've got so far in the current trials. And we'll keep these trials going for as long as we can as well. So what do we know and what don't we know? I think we know enough now to say with reasonable confidence that phosphite does suppress the growth of PTA. 
Um, I think we can confidently say it does restrict the spread of lesions on diseased trees. So it's at least a potential tool for treating disease, diseased or threatened trees. But there are a whole heap of things that we don't know. And I think it's very important to realise this. Um, will the trees recover after they had a major lesion? The, the tree in this photograph here, even if it's healthy on the other side, if we treat that and maybe stop that lesion spread, is this tree going to be able to regrow and get back to some sort of normal existence? We don't know. Um, how many treatments are going to be required? How, uh, how long will the benefits last? You know, is this something we can, we'll have to do annually, or is this something that we might be able to get away with every five years, every ten years? We don't know. We just haven't got the answers to those sorts of questions. We've got to remember that the, the disease, the pathogen, is still in the ground. We might be able to heal a tree and stop the spread within the tree, but the, the disease, the pathogen, is still out there in the soil around the tree and can reinvade at any time that the phosphite levels might drop below a, a certain level. We need to learn a bit more about um, better ways to apply phosphite, and there are quite a few options on that one. Um, actually, there's one I missed there, the dose rates required for big trees. I mentioned we only treated trees of that sort of magnitude. What about trees that are of that sort of magnitude, if it comes to the point where we need to treat those? What sort of dose rates are we going to need on those? How do we calculate it? What, what's the best time of year to treat? You know, it might be that at one time of year the phytotoxicity symptom will be a lot worse than others. We just don't know. We've had a standard regime of going through there in midsummer and treating then. But is that the optimal time? I don't know. And there are also these other environmental side effects that we do need to consider. Um, we don't even know what questions to ask on that one yet. <laughs> Cultural concerns. We do need to consider other people's opinions and viewpoints on the treatments that we are doing. Who decides? Who makes the decisions on the forest? Okay, if it's on private land, well, I guess it's the private landowner. But remember, you're only the guardian of those trees for only a few years. You know, they've been there long before you got there. It'll be there long after you leave. So who does decide on these sorts of things? Who decides in public forest on whether a particular forest should be treated or not? So there are all these issues that need to be addressed when it comes to, to treating. But we know what will happen in these disease stands if we don't do something. This is inevitable, I believe, on most sites where we've already got PTA. A couple of further questions. Could we be using the phosphite, rather than trying to bring back trees from the brink of death, to actually use it as a tool to try and reduce the spread of PTA? And it's certainly been used very effectively in that way in Australia, where they've had it within native plant communities. So get in there before the trees are actually dead by going in around, treating around the margins of infected areas. And that's where I think its, it's main use could potentially be. Bottom line is there's plenty more work to be done and lots of questions to answer. But I do want to emphasise, phosphite is a treatment, not a cure. And that's a very important point. And stopping the spread, that's where I started. I think stopping the spread is still the absolute key to the long-term survival of the garden. I would like to acknowledge that all of the work I've been talking about has been funded by the, the Kauri Dieback uh, Management Programme that, that is this joint agency of the, the MPI and the DOC and various regional council, I'd say very ably led by your local council here. They're doing a fantastic job in this space, Antonio Thank you very much. <coughs>